Hi, my name is Jan Janschar and thanks for watching our pre-recorded talk, Minerva, the curse of ECDSA nonces. This work was done in cooperation with my colleagues at Crocs, the Center for Research on Cryptography and Security at Masaryk University. This talk presents our discovery of a group of sidechain vulnerabilities in implementations of ECDSA, which we titled Minerva. It also presents a systematic analysis of latest attacks on noisy leakage of bit length of ECDSA nonces using data collected from vulnerable implementations. Now, at the beginning of our research into implementations of elliptic curve cryptography is the EC tester tool. We created it as a tool for testing black box ECC implementations, targeting both Java cards and software libraries. Java card is a very popular programmable smart card platform that runs a subset of Java. It is likely that most used programmable smart card platform out there and any vulnerability found in one is likely to have a large real-world impact. The general idea of this tool is to independently verify implementations of ECC uh, for correctness and security basically. The tool contains test suites which you might, ima might imagine as testing known attacks against ECC such as invalid or twist curve attacks and so on. Uh, now to move forward with this talk I will fix some notation. Uh, we will be working over prime field short Weierstrass curve with the generator G of prime order N and we are interested in ECDSA signatures and in ECDSA signing. And in our target implementations the operation looks like this. First uh, a uniformly random nonce is generated, then scalar multiplication is performed with this nonce and uh, the x coordinate of the result is the first part of the signature and then thirdly some modular arithmetic is performed with the hash of the message, the private key and the nonce. Uh, lastly, the two components of the signature are exported as an ASN1 their encoded sequence. Now, our EC tester tool obviously had some support for ECDSA and so it implemented several ECDSA tests. Uh, as the signatures are encoded in ASN1, which is somewhat known for parser errors, we included tests for ASN1 parsing in the ECDSA signature verification, which passed on all implementations. We also tested signature malleability, essentially testing whether signature verification accepts things like unreduced scalars and so on and so forth, and this also passed on all the implementations. Now, when testing with just ordinary test vectors, we discovered some discrepancies where some smart cards did not veri verify correct signatures, uh, but we found nothing exploitable, uh, merely an implementation broken on some parameters. Uh, we also looked at nonce randomness and verified how uniformly random the nonces are that are generated by the implementations, and we found no obvious issues. Now, having run out of interesting and directly testable things, uh, we decided to also look at timing. Now, this is a heat map of the most significant byte of the random nonce used in signing, which is on the x-axis, and the duration of signing on the y-axis. Uh, this is how a constant time implementation looks and we expected to find something similar in all implementations. Instead, we found this on a smart card implementation, and then this in the default Java implementation, then this, and again, and then this, and even this, which I don't really know how to explain. <laughs> uh, so timing is clearly a fail test. Uh, in total, we found one leaking smart card and five libraries. Uh, then we learned about the TPM fail paper, uh, which found two implementations leaking the same, same way. And recently a paper discovered this leak in the Mozilla NSS library. And who knows where else this leak might be. In total, we tested 13 libraries and eight smart cards, all with various scalar multiplication algorithms and found several different leakages, as you can see on the, the previous slide. Uh, it's important to note that the Athena smart card that we found the, the clearest leakage in is, was also common criteria certified, I think like EAL level 4, and it was also FIPS 140-2 validated. Um, so even certified devices uh, succumbed to such, a leak, such simple leakages. Now let's, let's now look at uh, what is actually leaking and how. Here you see the same most significant byte versus signature time heat maps as before and it turns out that the Athena and the libgcrypt and the Sun EC or Java implementations leak the bitling of the nonce kind of linearly. 
Uh, you see in the libg crypt uh, that there are several layers of, of uh, leakage, but that's only it, it's only offset by a con constant offset, and it's most likely um, some operating system stuff or or, or the stuff. Um, and the, the matrix implementation leaks the bit length, but also in the Hemingway kind of in in, in a sum. Um, and the crypto plus plus and the Volvo SSL implementations leak in a more complex way that depends on the most significant byte of the random nonce, but also leak the bit length in the process somehow. And we will, however, focus on the Athena, LibGcrypt, and Sun implementations, which leak the bit length linearly. Now, this is an overlay of several aligned power traces of ECDSA signatures on the Athena smart card with different bit lengths of the nonce. As you can see, the leakage happens in the scalar multiplication loop, which loops exactly bit length amount of times, which creates the, the, the timing difference and is also uh, clearly discernible on the, on the power traces. Now, when we instead look at the bit length and time, the linear but noisy leakage is evident. So from a power trace, the attacker is able to count the loops very simply and just arrive at the exact bit length of the nonce without any noise. But if only the timing from the, the reader side is, is provided, there is enough noise such that discerning individual uh, bit lengths of the random nonce is kind of harder and more, more noisy. Now, to be able to compare the leakage of in the implementations and simulate it, we modeled this leakage as this random variable L, uh, consisting of the constant base time, which basically for each implementation, it represents the constant time part of the computation, like hashing, for example. And then the interesting leakage of the bit length from the scalar multiplication loop, uh, and then some noise. In this model, each implementation has the three parameters specifying how long it performs the constant time operations, how long it takes for one iteration of the loop, which is this iter time uh, constant, and uh, what is the standard deviation of the noise. Uh, below you can see basically a histogram uh, of the I think, Athena uh, smart card leakage where the, uh, the, the, the signature time uh, histogram is on, on the x-axis and you can see it split into the different uh, groups based on the bit length of the random ones. Uh, now you might be asking, yeah, okay, but how do you exploit this? Uh, it's only uh, one leading zero bit on average per signature, so like one bit of information per signature and there is noise so what, what are you going to do about it you are going to have errors mo most likely and um, it seems unexploitable just from the get-go however luckily uh, Bonnet and Venkatesen introduced the hidden number problem way back in crypto 96 and the hidden number problem is formulated as recovering a secret element given some l most significant bits of some random multiples of it it is also stated in least significant bits and, and some other things like approximations, but we are interested in the most significant bits uh, state, statement of it. And this may start to sound familiar, and indeed, indeed if we think about what leakage of leading zero bits of the nonce gives us, uh, we first have this, so basically we have some oracle giving us the, the most, signif oh, most significant bits of the random nonce, and if we expand this, uh, from the relation of the, the nonce to the, the, the signature and the private key, uh, we finally have this. And uh, the original paper also presents a way of solving the hidden number problem by transforming it to an instance of the closest vector problem, which allows us to exploit this leakage. Now, the basic attack on this kind of leakage is previous works and, and goes as follows. The attacker first collects n signatures and takes d of the fastest. Uh, which obviously contain the largest number of the leading zero bits and thus the largest number of uh, usable information. The attack then assumes some bounds, Li, for the number of leading zero bits of the i used nonce. Uh, I'm uh, being quite vague here, but let's say the attacker just does this somehow. Uh, next, a lattice with the following basis is constructed, uh, utilizing the bounds and the, the values from the uh, from the known signatures. Uh, the target vector is constructed from the known signatures on assumed bound, this, this vector u. And finally, the, uh, the attacker solves the closest vector problem on this lattice with this target vector. Now, the closest vector uh, on, will often have this very special form with the private key as the last element. 
And this is because of the inequalities we started with, which, uh, as you can see, all of these, for all i, all of these inequalities, module n, uh, will be very small because of the bounds we put on them, which we could do because we kind of knew that these nonces are very small or, or very short. Now comes the question of, um, can we improve this attack? Uh, as the basic attack was previously known, we decided to analyze it further and, and see whether there is a way to improve it. Uh, and mostly with regards to how it handles noise and how to minimize the number of signatures. Uh, the attack is, is pretty quick. Um, if you have enough signatures and if you don't really have noise and uh, you can get a, your private key out in like five minutes, so we didn't really uh, focus on lowering the runtime as it didn't seem like a good target, but instead focused on, on lowering the amount of signatures. And also, if there is a lot of noise, this, this kind of lattice attack is very sensitive to noise. And so if there are any uh, inequalities uh, that you are state with your bounds that are not true, um, your target, uh, your attack breaks down very quickly and uh, you will not find the private key. You will just find some, I guess, random integer. Uh, and so um, to systematically evaluate previously known uh, and new improvements to the basic attack, we used four datasets of measured signatures from uh, the vulnerable implementations uh, with varying noise. So the sim or the simulated dataset is a noise-free simulated dataset. The SW dataset is from the software library libgcrypt. The TPM dataset is taken from the re recent TPM fail paper and represents the measurements of the STM microcontrollers TPM chip. And finally, the card dataset represents measurements from the Athena smart card. Um, the card dataset obviously has the, uh, the largest noise because it's, it's measured on the, on the reader side and the card was kind of noisy and the exchange of, of comments and responses between the card and the, the reader uh, also added a lot of noise. Uh, the simulated dataset obviously has no noise. And now to have an insight, into the behavior of the attack with regards to the number of signatures n and to the, to the dimension of the, the lattice or the number of used signatures d, uh, we run the attack five times, randomly sampling n signatures out of the, the selected data set, and we do this for a grid of parameters n and d. So we get this, this 2D grid of, of, for each point we have five results of, of like a randomized attack, from which we can look at things like success rate and, uh, and other interesting things. Now, the first question to tackle is that of the assignment of the bounds Li for the i fastest signature. Uh, most previous works simply use the constant for all these signatures calculated based on, on d, essentially. And they also evaluated this based on d and had all these, these graphs based on this. Uh, we instead, however, use geometric bounds calculated based on M, um, as, which we introduced as, as they better approach the true distribution of leading zero bits in the fastest D signatures. Here you can see a sample of the leading zero bits of the first D signatures as the, the blue dashed line, and with the geometric bounds as the green line. They obviously overlap quite a lot, and uh, below them you can see box plots of basically of, of the difference of the, our geometric bounds with the distribution of the of the true bounds or true leading zero bits. So you kind of see like the errors and that we are pretty close to the distribution. Uh, we get some more errors on the, the boundaries of the different kind of, uh, you could call them steps. Now, uh, using geometric bounds gives us a large improvement to the success rate of the attack, as visible from this heap map of the number of successes of the attack out of five tries on the four data sets. So we have the constant bounds with uh, C equal three, so we're kind of claiming three zero leading zero bits for, for all the uh, D signatures on the left. And on the right, you have our geometric bounds and you have the, the color-coded data sets there. And you can see that it specifically improves the results on the card data set, which for the constant bounds, there were only like four or five uh, successes out of all the, the thousands of attack tries that, that we did. Uh, but with the geometric bounds, it improved the success rate quite a lot. And also for the, for the other data sets. Now, as we want to analyze the success rate with regards to the number of signatures N, 
uh, we average the success rate over the dimension range and give the result here. So this shows a significant improvement in success rate for ge geometric bound for basically all of the data sets. And all further experiments will thus use this, these geometric bounds. Uh, while the hidden number problem kind of naturally transforms into the closest vector problem, we can also further use an embedding strategy to transform this problem into the shortest vector problem. Uh, we investigated both variants uh, using the Babai's nearest plane algorithm to solve the CVP and using a search of the reduced basis vectors to solve SVP. Um, now we, we confirm the findings of, of previous works that show SVP solving performing better and achieving success rate at the smaller number of signatures. Uh, however, there also exist other methods of solving both of these problems which might improve the success rate even more. Uh, so, but in all of our further experiments, we used SVP solving, if not otherwise noted. Uh, Recentering is another possible improvement to a lattice attack like this one, uh, that has been used in previous works also. And so, as the nonces are non-negative, uh, and in the inequalities we are only bounding their absolute value, uh, we can recenter them by subtracting and obtain a bound tighter by one bit. So you kind of subtract this, this, this half value and when you are doing an absolute value, you get kind of gain a tighter inequality, let, let's just say. Um, and yeah, it can be thought of like obtaining a free bit of information or, or not, yeah. Um, or using the bit of information that you know that non is, is non-negative, yeah. So, and when evaluated, we found a significant improvement in success rate in all data sets except the most noisy one. And so for the simulated data set, this improvement decreased the minimum number of signatures uh, for success to only 500. And so all further experiments used recentering, if not otherwise noted. Uh, well, errors arise, uh, obviously, when the inequalities given by the assumed bounds do not hold uh, due to noise. And so, so they very often leads to an unsuccessful attack and even in small quantities. So another tag improvement used in previous works aims to avoid errors by using random subsets of signatures. So we evaluated this by sampling d random signatures out of 1.5 d fastest signatures. And we did that this a hundred times and compared the success rate of this to the attack without random subsets. So we found that for the most noisy data set, this in indeed improves the success rate, as can be seen from the blue lines on the graph. However, it decreases the success rate for other less noisy datasets. And this can be explained by the fact that taking a random sample of D signatures out of the 1.5 D fastest does not choose the signatures with the largest amount of information. That's the D fastest sig um, signatures. And uh, as this is also a time consuming technique, uh, as each attack now runs like 100 times more, uh, we did not use this in the further experiments, but it is a promising technique of fixing errors in, in very noisy and very error-prone uh, datasets. Well, a, a po another possible implement variation of the attack is that instead of bounding the nonces themselves, uh, we can bound a difference of two nonces. And if we need to strive for matching the bounds, uh, information should not be lost and errors might cancel out. So if, for example, two nonces with the same assumed bound had one bit more than their assumed bit length, subtracting them would clear the, the bit and make uh, and fix the resulting inequality. So, so the resulting value, uh, value from this subtraction might be negative, so we can no longer use recentering. Uh, this technique improved the success rate, which was uh, at first quite surprising to us, and then we found out how it uh, actually fixes errors. And uh, it improved it on all but the most noisy data set and is comparable with the technique of using recentering. So this is kind of a variant of, of, of that, if you, you, you might think of it like that. Uh, we think that it did not help the most noisy data set because there is just so much noise that uh, the, the chance of uh, correcting some of the, most of the errors is just too small. Uh, in this kind of lattice effect, the lattice, lattice reduction step is the most costly. 
um, the technique of random subset is, is, is able to avoid errors but has to run the costly step many times to do so. Uh, we introduce a technique which allows us to fix some errors without the running the lattice reduction step many times, but instead running the, the relatively cheap Baba's nearest plane algorithm many times. So it is important to note that when solving via CVP, the U values are not part of the lattice basis construction. So, so you have the lattice basis and you have the, the vector U. And, and we can just construct the lattice and reduce it only once and then try to solve CVP with many different vectors U uh, with changes in some of the high bits of the, the elements of the vector of the, of the UIs. And well, this actually corresponds to kind of clearing errors uh, when some high bits of the nonce ki are set. So if you imagine changing uh, a bit in, in, the, in the, some high bit in ui, it actually corresponds to you kind of flipping the bit in the ki nonce and, and seeing if, if there was an error and if you actually corrected it this way and hoping that you will find the private key. So we evaluated this technique by trying to correct up to three errors at positions one bit over the bound and we stopped the attack as soon as some run was successful. Uh, you have to, when, when you are fixing errors this way, you have to uh, fix them all, all at once. So you have to uh, try to fix all possible triples in, in all of the, your D signatures. So this obviously, obviously takes some time. And so the heat maps display the minimal number of errors fixed before the, an attack was successful. And as you can see, as uh, the, the boundary between the attack not working at all and working without fixing any errors, there is quite a lot of, uh, lot of improvement where this kind of fixing errors actually help the attack to, to move from not working uh, to actually to do success. Uh, so this is a, looks like a promising technique to um, to fix errors in, in uh, lattice attacks when using CVP. And to save time by not reducing the lattice multiple times, but only changing the target and, and kind of searching around different places of the lattice. And when we project this and or let's average this over the dimensions, we also see that there is, um, there is significant improvement in success rate. It is, on, it is only comparable then uh, to the success rate when using ordinary SVP. So this is not an improvement that goes further than using SVP, but this is an improvement that kind of matches it while using CVP. It might be somehow possible to make this even better. Now to conclude, uh, we have performed the systematic analysis of lattice attacks on noisy leakage of bit length of nonces in ECDSA. We found that our geometric assignment of bounds lowers the minimal number of signatures for attack success and we found that uh, SVP solving outperforms CVP solving via the nearest plane algorithm. We found that recentering improves the success rate. Uh, and we found that correcting errors via bit flips in the, in the U values is promising as an improvement. Uh, doing this, we also demonstrated an attack on data from the TPM fail paper in which we lowered the amount of signatures required from 40,000 to only 900. Uh, we also demonstrated this attack on the, the, the Athena smart card, uh, which was common criteria certified uh, and also FIPS 140-2 certified. So thanks again for watching this talk, hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, you can check out the paper and some uh, other supplementary material on this link. Uh, it contains our proof of concept code, it contains more figures, it contains the paper itself and so on.